Greetings gamers, Sir Georges here. I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but I've just finished my semester, and now in the summertime, I plan to be making a lot more content. So you can expect one at least every two months. Big improvement on before. That's a joke, I plan to do a lot more than that. The first one I wanna make as we get back in the swing of things is a counter to Darth Revan I've been working on the last few weeks and getting the strategy and perfecting it. And that is with a Jedi Knight Revan team. And here's why you should care. Using Jedi Knight Revan, Grandmaster Yoda, Light Side Bastilla, Joe Lee, and Thrawn, you can consistently take out any Darth Revan or Sith Empire team with deficient mods by at least 30 speed. And it's a more reliable climb and battle than a straight up Darth Revan versus Darth Revan especially if you're slower, Bastilla or Darth Revan. Here's how it works. With Jedi Knight Revan and Grandmaster Yoda going before the enemy team because of the big speed boost from the leadership, you prevent the enemy Darth Revan from doing a AoE fear, getting rid of your tenacity up by marking him. Then you have Yoda spread tenacity up, which makes enemy fallen Bastilla's fear and debuffs useless. And then before the enemy Darth Revan gets a chance to then fear with his next move, you're going to take Thrawn and fracture him and take him out for the rest of the match. While fractured, your whole goal is to take the rest of your team and whittle down the enemy Darth Revan until Yoda can do one big power shot to kill Darth Revan before he does any of that equalization with other allies. Now here's how to play with this team. Kill order is going to be enemy Darth Revan first, for sure, because once he's out, then you don't have to worry about your tenacity up and your buffs going away. So you want to get Darth Revan first, then it's a toss up between Fallen Bastilla and the enemy HK. I tend to do Fallen Bastilla first, but sometimes it depends on the situation. You want them both out. Then the next will be Malak. And Sith Trooper, you're just going to forget about him. He's going to be a punching bag for when you don't want to target enemy Darth Revan with a assist, the strategic, strategic advantage that Jedi Knight Revan gives. You're going to target Sith Trooper, get to assist, and then keep wailing on enemy Darth Revan. So here's an ideal battle. To start a battle, you want Yoda to use his battle meditation, put two turns to nasty up on everybody, including Thrawn. Then you mark the enemy, Darth Revan. Enemy Bastilla waste all her stuff. Fracture Darth Revan. Now we're gonna whittle down Darth Revan until we can get a big, powerful, unstoppable force attack from Yoda. Let's just keep doing some basics. Now that protection up is off of Yoda, he'll be able to gain turn meter with an assist. So we're going to take our Jedi Revan, swap turn meter with Bastilla. She'll then call Yoda to assist onto Sith Trooper. Make sure you aren't targeting Darth Revan because then it won't do anything. And now we've got the perfect opportunity in position with all these buffs on Yoda and Darth Revan at maybe 65% health to get one big hit and try to one shot him. There we go, there we go. 55K, Darth Revan's out of the match. Now it becomes much easier and fear won't get rid of our debuffs. HK will, because an ally died, use Annihilate. Whoever it is, they'll then get the free turn. You can see here, this is really bad because our Jedi Knight Revan just took a turn. So he's got to survive with Deathmark all the way till his next turn. So now we'll call Revan to assist to get him some protection back. And then we're going to use Thrawn to turn meter swap to cheat the time needed for Revan to take another turn. That way he might get attacked, but he won't have the death mark anymore. And since he doesn't have corrupted battle meditation, let's go ahead and take out Bastilla so we don't have to worry about her fear and debuffs. We managed to keep the buffs on Yoda, so now we can spread those all around. And it's pretty much good game from here. The only thing we gotta worry about 
is not letting HK annihilate anybody else. And keeping protection up on our characters so that Malik isn't able to one-shot anybody. Okay, now we need to get rid of HK. Kron is always great to fracture Malik. Keeps him from getting those bonus turns. Stun HK. Spread more tenacity up. Mark. And I could hit auto from here. But since this is Grand Arena, I'm going to keep playing and try and make sure I get a full 60. Now, HK can be really pesky with him healing. So you want to focus on getting some big hits from Yoda and Jedi Knight Revan. Okay, that should be good. There we go. We got him killed. Everyone's at full protection. We want to ability block and stun Fracture Malak as much as we can. Because he's fractured, he doesn't get to take his bonus turn, doesn't heal, and we'll be able to kill him. There we go. Beautiful. Each character has their own playstyle. So for Jedi Knight Revan, you have to get him within 34 speed of enemy Darth Revan. That way, with the plus 35 boost from his leadership, you'll be at least one speed ahead and able to mark him before he does his fear. At the start of battle with Revan, you want to mark enemy Darth Revan, save mark after that for when you don't have corrupted battle meditation. It's not worth wasting it just for a mass assist. You really want that stun in mark to land. Jedi Knight Revan also tends to take the most hits, so you have to keep him healthy. Whether that's by calling him to assist, using Jolie to buff him up with protection up, you've got to keep that health on him. Speaking of his strategic advantage, it's useful for calling him or whoever is lowest on protection to assist so that they can heal and never get below 50% health, which would cause Jedi Knight Revan the leader to get death mark, and you gotta keep him in the match. Remember, do not use strategic advantage while targeting the enemy Darth Revan, because what's gonna happen is he's gonna call somebody to assist, they won't assist, then he won't assist, so really, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't heal, it doesn't help you out at all. So that's why you want to make sure you put the targeting onto Sith Trooper or somebody else. How to play with Yoda. Yoda must be within 34 of the enemy fallen Bastilla. That way, he can go before her, put tenacity up, making her first move absolutely useless. It's preferred for him to be faster than the enemy Revan, and even faster than your own Revan, but that's hard to do, not always manageable. The reason why you'd want that is to prevent stagger and the cooldown increase that the enemy Fallen Distilla can do to your Revan if he doesn't have tenacity up. Do not use Yoda's AoE because the enemy Malak is going to give fear on him when he does a critical hit and it's just going to slow you down and mess up and get rid of all your buffs that we're working on getting so that we can be powerful enough to kill the enemy Darth Revan. Just use basics most of the time. The only times it's okay to use that AoE is if you have corrupted battle meditation so that your crit chance is really low, or if the enemy Malak is low on health, so he's gonna have improved crit avoidance. Then it can be okay that you, because it's unlikely you'll get a critical hit. The only other time you'll choose to use his AoE is if you're all set up for that big hit on Darth Revan, but you have Corrupted Battle Meditation, then you can use your AoE, hope you don't get a critical hit, and then immediately be able to take a turn and do the power shot on Darth Revan. Speaking of that final hit, you need to be strong enough to pull it off. That's why you need the buffs on him from Bastilla. If you have to forsake some speed while modding Yoda to make his offense higher, do it. As long as you're faster than Fallen Bastilla, it's okay. Because you have to make sure that that power hit gets rid of Darth Revan or the team will fall apart fast. Don't use his battle meditation willy-nilly either. While the protection up and foresight can help you survive, you don't want protection up on Yoda because it keeps him from getting bonus turn meter due to enemy HK's Zeta. 
It's much better to have the turn meter gain from his basic or when you're calling Yoda to assist. After you do it at the very start to put tenacity up, don't use it again until you've got the enemy Darth Revan dead. Playing with Thrawn is pretty simple. You don't have to super mod him for speed. You just need to spend your first turn fracturing Darth Revan. Throughout the match, save his turn meter swap to use on Jedi Knight Revan when he gets death mark. This is a great way to prevent him from dying while having death mark and it being permanent so that Jolie can't revive him. You also want to mod Thrawn for protection and keep his protection up during the battle because he doesn't get to heal from Jedi Knight's Revan with assisting allies getting protection back. He also doesn't get to heal from Jedi Knight Revan's AoE turn meter swap. He also tends to be a favorite target of Malak. So you've got to use Joe Lee and Thrawn's own turn meter swap to make sure that he's got high enough protection that when Malak does his 100% health attack, he doesn't die. That Stilla doesn't need any special mods and she doesn't have to be fast. You don't need her to be the same as you used to have her in Arena. You only need her really to get those buffs onto Yoda so that he can get that big hit. After Darth Revan's dead, once you get rid of Corrupted Battle Meditation on your Bastilla, she's very useful for stunning and putting ability block on the enemy Malak and HK. So Lee's presence on the team is because he's here to revive and can really help a match when it starts to look like it's going bad by bringing your whole team back. Be careful early on not to use his assist to call Yoda because that protection up will apply before Yoda takes his turn so you'll then prevent Yoda from getting the turn meter from his basic and then he's got two turns that he can't gain any bonus turn meter. The targets you're really wanting on a favor is going to most of the time be Thrawn or Jedi Knight Revan. Thrawn, again, you gotta keep his protection up and keep him healthy. Same with Jedi Knight Revan because you don't want any of your tunes going below 50% health. The most common dangers you're going to run into. The first and most noticeable is your power shot failing from Yoda. Make sure your Yoda has enough buffs on him and offense and crit chance. You gotta have a high crit chance on him because it's the worst thing ever when you're all set up but he's not able to get that critical hit. He gets critical chance from the lead and from the buffs which come out to be 60%. So you've only got 40% there that you need to mod him and get him improved to where it's an almost guaranteed critical hit when he does that power shot for the kill on Darth Revan. Your target goal should be for that hit to come out to be a 60k critical hit. That should be enough to take out even the beefiest of Darth Revan's. HK's Annihilate can also be a real pain throughout the match. Because as soon as you take out one of the enemies, HK wants to take an eye for an eye and kill one of your people. If he takes out Joe Lee, then you can be in trouble. Or if he takes out Thrawn before you're able to kill Darth Revan, that can make for a nasty match as well. That's why as often as you can, as soon as you kill Darth Revan, get an ability block or a stun onto HK, delaying his Annihilate. The other problem that commonly happens is your Revan getting a death mark. There's not much you can do about that besides trying to keep your whole team healthy with protection. Once you've killed the enemy Darth Revan, then you can use Battle Meditation from Yoda to put protection up and foresight onto Revan to help keep him alive longer. And as we mentioned before, use Thrawn to swap turn meter with him to get rid of the death mark quickly. The lineup for this team is pretty solid with not very much room for change, but you can swap out Jolie for GK. It'll make it so that your characters lose five speed from the leadership. So you'll have to make up for that and take that into account when doing your calculations. Crit immunity can really help with your survivability. Another alternative is that I have tested and had some success swapping out Bastilla for Hermit Yoda. Only problem there is while you do get to put Grandmaster Training onto Grandmaster Yoda, without the crit chance up and crit damage up that Bastilla gives Yoda, it can be hard to get his hit reliable and strong enough to kill an enemy Darth Revan. Here's what I use for mods. You can see 
that I don't have anything crazy on my Yoda's offense. And the speeds on Bastilla and Joe Lee aren't anything arena super. Same for Thrawn on speed. So this is a team you can put good mods on your Revan and Yoda and not have to worry about them and mess with them as the metas shift and time goes on. For your whole team, especially Thrawn and Jedi Knight Revan though, focus on putting protection on them from the primaries because Malak has changed the game with his constant health drain. Yoda, make sure you put enough crit chance on him to make the power shot reliably critical and it's not too bad for modding and gear. Now a couple tips on how to negate this counter with your own Darth Revan and your own Sith Empire squad. Mod your Darth Revan for lots of health. The higher health you have, the harder it is for Yoda to get that power shot to one shot you when you're just above 50% health. Because if that power shot fails, normally Malik will be equalized with, then he'll do his force drain, take 100 health and kill one of your characters. The Zeta on HK is unique. The one that prevents turn meter gain for people with protection up. That's really helpful in hurting this team because if you can slow down Yoda so that he's not able to get enough turns in and get rid of Corrupted Battle Meditation to where he can finally land that big hit, then your Darth Revan will be able to take a turn and get out of Fracture before that before he dies. And then the third way things can go wrong that you can prepare against the team would be, even though it's obvious, get your Darth Revan faster than the enemy Yoda. Because if you can put buff immunity onto the enemy Jedi Knight Revan, then Bastilla on your the fallen Bastilla will put fear and all these debuffs onto the enemy Jedi Knight Revan, which will delay him and really mess up the flow for this counter. How does this counter stack up? This is a hard counter to the team. It will only go wrong if you can't get that power shot or after you kill Revan, if HK starts wreaking havoc and annihilating one after another. I'm going to give this team an 85% success rate. So it's very reliable. The best counter so far in fighting Darth Revan without using your own Darth Revan. It should be great to use in Grand Arena and Territory Wars. Thanks for tuning in guys. Let me know what else you want me to cover or talk about. This is just the first in a long line of videos I have planned. Stay tuned as I'm going to start streaming my Grand Arena each week. And I'll be around on the comments and on Discord to answer any questions and chat. God bless and may the force be with you.